Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi guys, it's Silas from Kit Guru, and today I'll be taking a look at a pretty socket specific cooler from Be Quiet, the Dark Rock Pro TR4. So let's start with the basics. As the name includes TR4, uh, this suggests it will be perfectly suited to AMD Ryzen Threadripper CPUs, and specifically, of course, the TR4 socket. From the outset, the Dark Rock Pro TR4 uh, shares a very similar aesthetic to the Dark Rock Pro, uh, which we reviewed previously, and also shares a very similar price at £79.99. Looking at both models side by side, it's pretty easy to confuse them, uh, but the biggest giveaway that one is TR4 socket specific is of course the massive CPU block. There are also a few aesthetic differences, but very minor, uh, such as the slightly different peg layout at the top of the cooler and the position of the seven copper heat pipes. Uh, but just like the standard Dark Rock Pro, the TR4 version also features the seven heat pipes, the same special black coating with ceramic particles, uh, same dimensions at 145.7 by 136 uh, by 162.8 millimeters, and a TDP of 250 watts. The fans as well are also exactly the same, one Silent Wings 3 120mm and one 135mm 4-pin PWM fan. In the box we find the cooler itself, an accessories box with instructions in a number of different languages, uh, and a slightly smaller mounting kit. As the Dark Rock Pro TR4 is 100% TR4 specific, you're not going to find mounting hardware for any other socket. You do also receive a long Be Quiet screwdriver, uh, which will come in handy during installation. It's nice to see that the quantity of thermal compound included is a little greater, uh, as you will need more for installation with a Threadripper CPU. The standard Dark Rock Pro 4 came with a bit of a measly tube of thermal paste in my opinion, uh, so this is great to see. You also receive a spare set of mounts for a third fan, which is awesome. The internal 135mm fan comes pack packaged separately. Uh, this will speed up installation as uh, you need to access the central channel of the cooler, and the 120mm is pre-attached. Both fans also feature braided cables, which is great, and a more premium option from Be Quiet. Nice and high quality. The cooler, as you would expect, feels nice and solid, and pretty weighty at 1.18 kilograms. Just as with the non-TR version, the all-black coating looks excellent, and as it has a ceramic additive, uh, this shouldn't affect heat dissipation. As I mentioned, the name suggests the Dark Rock Pro TR4 is only compatible with the TR4 socket, so there isn't a ton of spare mounting hardware, uh, which does improve on installation times. Firstly, you take the four black plastic spacers uh, and slot them over the four threaded mounting pegs. You then install the two TR4 mounting brackets using the four included screws. It's worth noting that each of the brackets is a different length, uh, one designed for just above the socket and one for below. Thermal paste uh, can then be applied. We elected not to use the paste included so that we can maintain some consistency with uh, other TR4 cooler testing and position the cooler above the CPU. There is a third metal bracket which needs to be passed through the center of the cooler and lined up with the two available mounting holes. The screws are affixed to the bracket uh, with a couple of rubber washers so they don't fall out which is also really helpful. At the top of the cooler are two removable pegs which can be unscrewed to allow access to the top bracket and the included screwdriver can then be used to pass straight through the center of the cooler. With everything firmly mounted in place, you can then reattach the 135 mm fan and the 120 mm fan if you've removed it. Overall installation is pretty easy going. A few less steps required as a backplate isn't needed and as you only receive just the mounting hardware required, if you're left with any spare parts, you've probably gone wrong somewhere. In terms of RAM installation, the 120mm fan uh, was removed to offer a, a bit more space. Uh, for clearance, you're looking at about 4.5cm, and, and it's also cool to see that the cooler features a cutout both at the front and the back, so nothing should come in contact with your memory slots. Clearance is fine for low profile memory, but the Guile Evo X RGB RAM, typically used for testing on our Z170 platform, uh, comes just shy of 6cm, so it's definitely worth checking this to ensure you can install all of your memory modules, and of course in the correct slots. On to testing. Now, as the Dark Rock Pro TR4 has been designed to be used exclusively with Threadripper CPUs, we have had to change up our testing bench a little bit. For CPU, we are testing with the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, a 16-core 32-thread beast installed in a Gigabyte X399 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. For RAM, we are using a 32GB kit of G-Skill Flare X running at 3200MHz, and storage is handled by a 120GB Samsung 840 EVO SSD. 
Powering our bench is a Seasonic Prime Platinum 650 watt PSU and just to enable a display output, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980 was also installed. For testing we ran a number of tests, both with the 1950X locked in at 3.4GHz and overclocked on all cores to 4GHz with a core voltage of 1.4V to generate a worse kind of case scenario for temperatures. As the 1950X is not really going to be an optimal CPU for gaming, uh, we elected to run Prime95 to establish a highest possible temperature at both 3.4 and 4.0 GHz, and as the 1950X is more suited for productivity, passes of both Cinebench and Blender's BMW benchmark uh, were run to give a better idea of temperatures during a more typical use case. All temperatures taken are delta T values, which means we subtract the ambient temperature from the CPU temperature. Uh, more details, of course, of our full testing methodology can be found over on kitguru.net. So first, let's take a look at Prime95. At 3.5 GHz, the Darkrock Pro TR4 performed pretty admirably, maxing out at 36.2 degrees and idling at about 5.6. Keeping the 1950X at stock, it's pretty fair to say that this would be your expected temperature, uh, and even when overclocking to 4 GHz, the absolute highest temperature recorded came in at 62.6 degrees. If you are looking to overclock, the 1.4 volts used uh, could be brought down a little bit, which would result in a small drop in temperatures there. Uh, when at idle, the 1950X sat quite happily at 7.3 degrees. With Cinebench, as it tended to finish so quickly uh, and didn't really allow our 1950X to reach a peak temperature, a number of passes in its multi-core tests were run back to back until the temperature stabilised. Max temperatures when overclocked did come in a little lower at 53.3 degrees, uh, being a less taxing test this was to be expected, and single core passes were also run just to see how the Dark Rock Pro TR4 would fare when not utilising all 32 threads, uh, where the 1950X topped out at 23.3 degrees. Locked in at 3.4 GHz, we find lower temperatures still, both for single and multi-core tests. Moving on to Blender, we can see that the Darkrock Pro TR4 sits basically in between our Prime and Cinebench test results, with 59.3 degrees recorded when overclocked and 34 degrees at 3.4 GHz. This is a little bit more sort of real world as testing goes, uh, primarily as it's an actual instance of rendering, which the 1950X is basically perfectly suited for. In terms of times, the BMW benchmark completed in 2 minutes 18 seconds when overclocked, and a little longer, 2 minutes and 41 seconds at stock. Audible noise was also recorded when our 1950X was running prime at 4 GHz, and even then the Dark Rock Pro TR4 wasn't really very audible at 44.4 dBA. So it's certainly not over irritating. At idle and even load at 3.4 GHz, it was quieter still and really only audible with your head right up against it. Overall though, performance was rather impressive on a number of fronts. Uh, firstly, it handles temperatures really well, and if you are looking to keep your CPU stock, it strikes me as rather unlikely even during long render sessions uh, you'd ever reach a worrying temperature. What's also great is that even under super heavy load, it remained really quiet. Comparing it to the Dark Rock Pro, uh, which we've tested previously using a 7700K, uh, audible noise was basically the same at full load, and even when you consider the 1950X's much higher TDP when compared to the 7700K, this is actually rather impressive. So to summarise, the Dark Rock Pro TR4 is basically, as the name suggests, the Dark Rock Pro, but for your Threadripper CPU. But this isn't by any means a criticism. You can still expect the same solid quality, premium fans, and clean all-black aesthetic, along with, if anything, even simpler installation. The price, of course, initially strikes you as a bit dear, but if you're looking to build a similar system to our test setup, £80 for a cooler for your almost, say, £700 CPU suddenly seems to make a bit more sense. If you are looking to build a workstation and basically don't want to deal with the extra points of failure, uh, which could be expected with an all-in-one liquid cooler, and doesn't even break a sweat even during longer render sessions, the Dark Rock Pro TR4 from Be Quiet would be the perfect addition. So thanks for checking out this review of the Darkrock Pro TR4. Uh, please let us know in the comments what you think, or if there are any other coolers with TR4 socket support, uh, which also should be considered. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't, and if you aren't already, please consider subscribing below, making sure to hit the bell icon for notifications of new video releases from KitGuru. I've been Silas from KitGuru, and I will see you in the next one.